All right, for today's video review, we're gonna be taking a look at Transformers Studio Series, Bumblebee Movie Brawn. And uh, yeah, this is a, a really nice little figure. Um, I'm not usually a big fan of the live action movie designs, but the uh, a lot of those Cybertronian designs from the Bumblebee movie specifically, I think are just like really nice kind of updated, so, you know, quote unquote, more realistic uh, versions of G1 designs. They definitely feel a little bit more true to the characters. And Braun was definitely one of them that I liked a lot. And when we saw images of his toy, I was like, wow, gotta get that figure because he looks really cool. And uh, yeah, here he is in his little uh, Cybertronian thing mode. And I adore this vehicle mode. I think it's really cute. Uh, I think it works well for Braun as just like a nice little, you know, kind of weird speeder car. I think it hits the right balance between stuff like like the Siege Cybertronian designs, which were like just basically Earth cars that were like reshelled a little bit. And then designs like, you know, maybe Soundwave from the Bumblebee movie design, which it just looks a little bit too weird. And uh, and Alien, I like this because it's like, it's a car, it's got wheels, but it definitely doesn't look like anything on Earth. It's like a nice little Cybertronian little speedy thing, which is cool. I like how it's got the little, uh, you know, kind of wedged in wheels in the front here. It's like sort of like a tricycle, but not really because it does have all four wheels. But yeah, it rolls pretty well. Um, the only part of the design that I question a little bit is just this huge sort of like gap on the top. I sort of wish something could cover this up, but it does sort of look like, you know, it could be like a little station for like a, a really tiny transformer to like, you know, sit in and be a gunner or something like that. That could be kind of cool, but with nothing to really, you know, no figures to actually act that out with. It just kind of feels like a weird gap there. Would have been cool to have that covered up a little bit more, but that's okay. Um, he comes with a couple weapons here. He comes with a little uh, a drill piece, kind of referencing uh, the one time or a couple times he used a drill in the G1 cartoon. Cool. And his big gun here. And uh, these do have storage in this mode. Um, for the gun, it's got this hole on the top right here and this little tab on the top, and they want you to just plug it in like that. And visually, I think that looks kind of cool, you know, just like adding a gun to the to the speeder. I kind of prefer it without the gun, but you know, that, that works well enough for me. Um, but the tab connection is really not very good. So it doesn't ever really feel like totally stable up there, which kind of sucks. Like. If you just shake it around a little bit, it will fall off. So, eh, not in love with that. And again, you know, I sort of wish there was some sort of alternative storage where it would store underneath, but since it's such a big gun compared to a little guy, like, I can see why that didn't really work out, but eh, I don't know. Visually, I think it looks okay. I just wish it was a little bit more solid of a connection. And then with the drill, what's really cool is, uh, if you see this little grill section in the front here, it actually has a, a hole in the, in the bottom and it hinges up like this. And this is not a transformation joint at all. It's literally dedicated just for this purpose. So you can plug in the uh, the drill there and give him his little sort of drill mode. And I think that looks cool. Here he is with both of the uh, the weapons attached. I think that works pretty well as a vehicle mode. It's got kind of the clean version and the and the not clean version. The drill itself, I mean, it can rotate on the peg, but it doesn't have like a spinning thing or anything like that. Um, but I do appreciate that, like, if you don't want the drill on there, they do have this extra hinge to kind of just, like, hide it with a grill so you don't have the, the port there. That's kind of nice. Uh, the drill itself does also have uh, one of those holes there, so you could plug the drill up there like that or the other way, I guess. Well, doesn't totally fit the other way, but... Uh, or, I guess, you could, since there's another little peg on top of the gun, you could uh, peg it on like that and, and do that. Eh, some options, although that makes it even less <laughs> stable up there. But I don't know. I Personally, I kind of prefer the vehicle mode without any of the extra stuff on it, but it's nice to have those as options. Uh, in terms of comparisons, just for the standard one, here he is with Kingdom Sideswipe, just so you can see how he kind of sizes up there. Here he is with the, uh, the Shockwave core class figure from Studio Series, who obviously is not in scale, since Shockwave should be like Voyager height compared to Braun, but... Still cool to see them together. And then here we have him with the sound wave from the Bumblebee movie. So you can see what they look like together. And then why not? Here he is with uh, with Ravage. <laughs> not in his box mode, but in his, uh, you know, 
beast mode. And uh, yeah, um, the transformation on this guy is actually pretty neat. It's uh, it's simple, it's intuitive, but it has some fun steps in it. Uh, first thing you wanna do is uh, take these green sections here and actually untab them from the wheels because the wheels are actually attached to this middle bit, not to the, uh, to the green sections, which I think is kind of cool. So untab them like that, just bring these section down. It's on a little hinge here, but also you know, you're gonna wanna bring it down at the hips as well just so it's all straight forward and then rotate them around at the waist. And then the legs here, you wanna rotate back like this. And then what's pretty cool, and I really like this leg transformation is this green section will rotate around on this pivot like this, and then you fold up the feet there. I think that's a really cool, simple, elegant little leg transformation. Just works pretty well. Now the arms are just kind of like hung up in the inside of the, uh, the body here. So you just wanna move them out like that bring them forward on these hinges, they kind of click into place and then you just want to straighten out the elbow there. Then uh, the head is on this panel here, you just want to push it up like that to lock it in place and then take the wheels, fold them into this section and then take this whole section and fold it onto the back there and then make sure you click it in place. Uh, if, it, you, if you see any bit of like seam here, like an opening seam, then you'd have to click it in place a little bit further. And uh, yeah, there you have Braun in his robot mode and he looks really cool. I like this design a lot. You know, it's a little bit, you know, more bubbly and round than like the G1 Braun design, but it definitely gets the overall vibe across much better than like really kind of any Braun figure that we've gotten in the past. I hope we get a new Braun soon in uh, like, generations style but since they just refreshed the trademark with this guy i'm guessing it's probably going to be a couple years but eh, whatever he's uh he's cool for now and uh yeah you can take a look at his uh head sculpt there which is um visually maybe the one part of it i don't like as much i i don't really like his weird sort of like nondescript kind of sunk in face there eh, eh. I, I don't like that quite as much as some of the other uh face designs for the bumblebee movie but at least the overall kind of silhouette is still there with the with the helmet. Um, in terms of articulation, his head, I, I think it's on a ball joint, but you only really get, you know, just a bit of rotation just because of the shape of his helmet. Um, the shoulders are on ball joints, and then it's got that extra transformation joint that can go back eh, a little bit to kind of like act as a, a butterfly joint, but not a ton, just a little bit. Um, so yeah, you can bring the arms all the way around and out to the side. He's got a bicep swivel, but it's sort of like in the... Uh, in the the shoulder itself so it doesn't get like a full 360 degrees it gets from about there to about there which is enough for like expression but you know he can't like do a full 90 degrees bend with his uh with his bicep swivel and then the uh the elbows being double jointed have a pretty nice curl here he does have wrist swivels which is nice because he doesn't need to for transformation uh he's got a waist cut uh the hips can go forward back out to the side only about that far because the wheel bumps in. And what's kind of weird is like, if you're trying to move just one leg, they kind of move in tandem a little bit. Like those pieces are attached together. Like you don't have to, you can just move one leg, but it tries to take the other leg with it, which can be a little bit annoying, but not, not that big a deal. Um, he does have a thigh swivel, but it's really like at the knee. So like if you want the wheels here to change orientation, they really can't. Cause when you rotate his uh, his thigh swivel, it's really only the, uh, the lower leg. Um, he's got, Again, a pretty good knee bend, a little bit past 90, uh, and ankle tilt, and then the toes can also tilt down if that's at all useful. So yeah, pretty uh, pretty decent articulation for this little guy, and he is pretty little. Uh, in terms of size comparisons, here he is uh, with some uh, other mini bots that we've gotten recently. Obviously, these are, you know, more Generations designs rather than Bumblebee movie designs, but you can see he kind of stacks up with them just for some more apt size comparisons. He's a little bit taller than Bumblebee, a little bit shorter than Huffer, which I feel like generally works in, in scale with them. I mean, I don't know how well he scales with the other uh, Cybertronian mode Bumblebee movie figures because I don't have any of the other ones yet. I've never really liked the look of the uh, the Bumblebee or Cliff Jumper figures from that with the, the cheating chest. Um, so I, those are the more apt comparisons because he's like the main character of the movie. But, you know, I, I from images, it looks like that figure is maybe a little bit taller than Braun, which feels weird, but I, I can't say that for sure. But I, yeah, here also he is with a side swipe again for a more standard size deluxe. Um, here he is with, uh, with Shockwave, who's obviously not at all in scale, but cool to see those designs together anyway and then here he is with uh with Soundwave and Ravage so you can see 
you know, that works pretty well. That was like roughly the scale in G1. So I figure that's probably more or less accurate to the, uh, to the movie designs as well. Um, in terms of his, uh, his weapons, obviously you can give him his, uh, his big gun here, which I think looks pretty cool, even though it doesn't store great in vehicle mode. And then with the drill, I mean, you can just give it to him as like a knife, I guess, whatever that's supposed to be. And it looks okay. I just can't think of like how that weapon would actually be used. Um, you can also take the drill like I showed off earlier. You can peg it onto the top here if you want uh, that look going on. I think that looks a little, a little cool. That's not too bad. And then if you really wanted, you could also peg it into the uh, the barrel here, which I think looks a little silly, but you know, if you wanted to like shoot the uh, the drill as a missile, that could be kind of cool. Um, in terms of storage, uh, he really doesn't have very good storage. He's got the same peg that he had before and uh, the same hole that he had before and also an additional hole on the side here, which is more or less in the same place on the gun. So like when you peg it in, it just like awkwardly sits really high off of his, uh, his back, like it kind of messes with the silhouette and again, does not peg on very securely. So like, even if you're using the other peg, like I don't think that looks good at all. I I don't understand why they gave the, the gun this other hole and didn't put it like up here so you could peg it in like that. That I think would be okay. But having it stick way off the top like that, I think looks pretty bad. And then for the, um, the drill, I mean, you could just peg it onto the gun and store them both in the uh, in the same place. Or if you're not using the gun and you're just using the drill, you can also peg on the drill to that same spot. And that one stays on a little bit more securely and is a little bit less like ridiculous hanging off of his back. But yeah, overall, the weapon storage on this guy is kind of bad. I, <laughs> I'm not a huge fan of it, but that's okay because I kind of prefer his sort of vanilla vehicle mode anyway. So I think I'll just take the weapons and put them in a box, but it's nice that he comes with them regardless. But uh, yeah, that's uh, pretty much all there is to say about this guy. He's a really nice little figure. I like the transformation a whole lot just because it's intuitive, it's easy, it's smooth, and it has enough going on with it that I think makes it kind of interesting. So it, it hits kind of that sweet spot between being like involved but not like irritating. Uh, the robot mode I think looks great. The vehicle mode I think looks great. Uh, you know, little nitpicks here and there, but still overall pretty good. And the articulation is good. The joints feel pretty good. So yeah, pretty uh, pretty good figure overall. Uh, if you enjoy my videos, make sure to leave a like and consider subscribing. I do reviews every Tuesday, Thursday, and Sunday. And without further ado, here we have Transformers Studio Series Bumblebee Movie Brawn.